Okay, getting close to the end of the neurotransmitters. The purines, those are those guys, remember I told you like AT base pairs, the A is um, is um, adenine um, and it bonds with thymine. Um, well, these are similar to those. Adenosine is a neurotransmitter. Um, adenosine diphosphate, two phosphates on it, adenosine triphosphate, which is ATP, um, also used as a neurotransmitter. The only one that I want you to know about is adenosine because we mess with this one all the time. The most commonly used neuroactive chemical is caffeine. The way that caffeine works is it is an adenosine antagonist. Um, adenosine is an inhibitory CNS neurotransmitter, among other things. And caffeine blocks the effect of this inhibitory CNS neurotransmitter. And when you antagonize the effect of an inhibitory CNS neurotransmitter, you get the excitation. It allows you to wake up in the morning. So that is adenosine. Okay, next is our friends, the neuropeptides. And the neuropeptides are the largest in size of the neurotransmitters. They're not the most common, but they're the largest in size. So we were dealing with things that were like this size with an amino acid. Neuropeptides include like these guys. Do you see like this is beta endorphin and this is another one in the enkephalins. Um, so these are bigger neurotransmitters. Um, they are larger, so they're slower acting. They're usually between 5 and 40 um, amino acids long, bonded with peptide bonds. Um, and they include what we call the endogenous, meaning you make them, opioids. And they include naturally occurring endorphins, which you've heard of before, and enkephalins, which you might not have. And we'll just lump them together for now. Opium use has been recorded since 3400 BC. So we knew about um, exogenous opioids long before we knew about neurotransmitters or anything related to neurotransmitter receptors. So the terminology typically goes opioids or opiates. Opiates is kind of a broader term. Opioid is more commonly used now. Um, the receptors are generally called opioid receptors, and they include a bunch, but delta, kappa, and mu are the three big ones. And the one that we know that's really related to dependence, reinforcement taps into the addiction pathway is the mu1 receptor. That's a biggie that's being studied quite a bit. Um, functions. My natural opioids that I have um, are functioning in the CNS and the PNS, and they reduce pain transmission to and from the brain. And they also often induce euphoria. So not much pain, lots of pleasure. So um, now, um, generally, um, medications that activate certain opioid receptors, especially the mu1 ones, tend to be highly habit forming and also subject to down regulation, which will make you want to seek out more to both reduce the pain and increase the pleasure. Um, and they tend to tap into the dopamine pathway and reinforce their own use. There is a huge category of what we call the opioid analgesics that were originally derived from the sap of the opium poppy, which is this pretty poppy right here. The sap from the opium poppy includes um, these opioid derivatives like morphine and heroin and codeine and oxycontin. And, and then we've got the, um, the um, synthetic ones that are even stronger, like fentanyl. Um, and these are definitely subject to tolerance and downregulation over time. And then um, we also have... Um, the drugs that we can use to get people off of opioids like methadone, which is um, an opioid that's longer lasting with less pleasure, but still has analgesic effects. And then naloxone, which is a drug that is used as a rescue medication. And I'll tell you guys about how that one works um, in class. Importantly, when opioids are released, dopamine is often also released. And so they reinforce their own use in the brain which is an interesting discussion about why we use something like these. 
very, very effective at pain relief, really, really hard to sustain over long periods of time. Last little tidbit is that sugar addiction, which we don't tend to think of as an addiction until we're a type 1 diabetic, uh, can be circumvented by using the same drugs like methadone that they use um, for opioid addiction. Um, there are some other neuropeptides, just some others in here that people tend to ask about, so I added them in there. Don't usually ask about them on tests. I'll talk about endocannabinoids in the next video.